This is day 6 of the 30 day reading challenge, and today's book is one for all aspiring home cooks. Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat is a cookbook by the American chef Simon Nosrat, and it is a lengthy 436 pages, excluding the index. Technically, I only read about 200 pages, and a bit more, since the rest were all recipes, but I did skim through the recipes section, as well as pick some that looked interesting. I'll tell you my thoughts on the book and its format first, and then I'll pick out some main ideas. As a sort of disclaimer, I do love to cook, so my review may be a bit biased. In short, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat is not your average cookbook, which has a plethora of highly advanced recipes that use foods that no one has heard of. Instead, Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat focuses on concepts. The first 200 pages or so introduces you to four elements of good cooking, which are, you guessed it, salt, fat, acid, and heat. It combines science and food, and there is so much good information that I would definitely not recommend anyone to take extensive notes, or read it in just one day, like me. If you're thinking about starting to cook, or to improve your understanding of cooking, this book is one of the best launching pads. It takes you through the basic elements without too much confusing jargon or technical food terms. Plus, there are plenty of illustrations to guide you, even though they're hand-drawn. It'll be extra useful if you're a science-oriented person like me, since it'll help you relate to scientific concepts like osmosis and diffusion. The latter half of the book includes all sorts of recipes based on different types of ingredients. Although there's a lack of realistic photos, which kind of sucks, there is all sorts of extra information, and it references back to the four main elements. Throughout the recipe section, the author also shows you how to complete basic skills, one of my favorites being how to break down a whole chicken. One of the best things about the book is its unique examples, charts, and illustrations with all sorts of information such as when to eat what and food from around the world. Finally, to connect mundane facts, Nosrat uses her own personal anecdotes to spice things up, no pun intended. This book is definitely recommended to those who love cooking and to those who may want to learn what cooking is all about. Maybe you want to learn more about food and culture, or the science behind cooking, or maybe you want to prepare for a healthier lifestyle where you cook at home. Either way, if you want to learn anything revolving around food, give this book a shot. It'll be a great launching pad, as I said and especially an amazing reference book. I do suggest that you at least try to read some recipes or learn some very basic skills before you read this book, since salt, fat, acid, heat can be intimidating. Finally, here are some main ideas from the first half of the book. The first element of the four is salt. It's how you enhance the flavor of your food, not just make your food saltier. There are different types of salt, from table to culture to sea salt, but they have different textures and salty levels, so be sure to know how salty your salt is. Salt has all sorts of effects on different foods, and it can change the texture and look of them. For example, salting meat has a huge impact on flavor and texture. Next, we have fat. Fat is what cooks food and gives the different textures that it may have. It can be a cooking medium, or a flavor enhancer. There are all sorts of different fats, from animal fat, to butter, to olive oil. Each has its own uses, for example, oil in vinaigrette and butter in pie dough. After we come to acid, acid is a balancing agent. It helps to balance all of the flavors in the dish. It also has an effect on the color and texture of food, for better or for worse. Finally, we have heat. Heat is the energy transformation that forms chemical reactions within foods. Heat interacts with water, fat, carbohydrates, and proteins differently. For example, with fat, it can rise to high temperatures for browning foods. There are all sorts of ways to use heat, from gentle methods like simmering and braising, to intense methods like pan frying and grilling. In the end, when you combine these four elements together, you can achieve great cooking. One of the most important things to remember is to taste, to try and to experiment. Each person has different ingredients, different cooking materials, and different taste. Salt to taste 
add acid to taste, and find what works for you. Also, with salt, try it little by little. Taking salt out is much harder than adding it in. So that's a short summary and is by no means a comprehensive guide. As I said, this book is one that is most suitable as a reference. You want to come back to it again and again, and each time that you do, you'll be able to gain something more out of it than the last time you read it. I'm certain that I'll read it again after this whole challenge is done. So that's today's book and video. If you end up reading the book, please tell me about any thoughts and feelings that you had. If you had any questions or suggestions, send them my way. I hope you enjoyed the video and that you enjoyed the book. Happy reading and thank you all for listening.